Hey, Brian, how are you doing? Hey, Connie, I'm good, eh? Good. Oh, okay, I'm not there. But...
Hey, but okay, let's go. We're good, Brian. How are you? Oh, yeah. Okay. Glad to be here. Glad you are to join us. Hey, Kevin, I saw you saying something, but I couldn't hear you. Yeah, I was saying that I'm glad to be here. So. <laughs> oh, sorry. Not to be this. I was talking about uh, uh, Kevin. Uh, oh, okay. Thank you. Brian. Okay, there we go. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, sure. uh, I want to thank you all for joining us for day four of our four days of health mess. Um, we appreciate you all for joining us. Uh, just like all of our other days, today is going to be another great experience, a lot of learning and some good information to come from this. Um, so just to recap, um, this week we have touched on a few different topics. So Monday we talked about self-advocacy. On uh, Tuesday we talked about mental health. Yesterday was time management and now today we'll be talking about post-holiday budgeting. Um, so I want to just take a minute and like I said, thank you all for jumping on this time around. Uh, I also want to see uh, a little bit of participation here with this one. Um, so in the chat real quick, I want you all to let me know, how do these topics play together? Why do we pick these four? Why, why do you think or how in what way do you think that they align with each other? So put it in the chat. How do you feel like these four topics of self-advocacy, mental health, time management, and post holiday budgeting. How do they work together? Or you can unmute yourself and let us know too. All right, I see some people in there getting a type on. We're going to give them a minute because I know that's a long question and that could be a long answer also. I want to see what you have to say. All right, Connie said they're all helpful with your life. 100% agree, Connie. That is correct. Anybody else? All right, I see some more people. How do these topics work together? Thank you. Oh, oh, oh. Let's see what we got. Oh, you guys are typing some long, so I'm, I'm curious to see what this is going to look like. All right, let me say every tip is a good tip. We are different, so we can pick whatever we think we will, will be best for us. Okay, not bad. They are helpful, especially during the holidays. 100% agree. They are all helpful, especially during this time. Um, thank you to those that are just joining in. We're putting in the chat based on the topics that we've had this week of self-advocacy, mental health, time management, and now today budgeting. How do these things work together? So based on those topics, how do they play together? Let us know what you think. And then I'm going to give the answer at the end to see. But so far, we got some good ones in there. Why did we pick these four topics? How do they work together for you? I'll give about 30 more seconds. Hey, Miss Samantha, I see you typing. You always give me something good. What you got? What you got?
It's coming through. I'm ready to get the answer. I'm just waiting on her response first before I say it. And while she's typing her answer, I do want to let you all know if you want to go back and review any of the sessions, whether it was earlier in the week or today, I will post the link at the end of today's session to the YouTube page that will have all four of the recorded sessions on there for you. So you can watch it, you can share it with friends and family. You never know who you might help. All right, Ms. Smith said, if you're not budgeting well, it can cause stress. Time management also cuts down stress. And that is the mental health piece. I would 100% agree. You almost took my answer. I mean, I'm kind of impressed by that. <laughs> but yes, all of these things play together. So even the self-advocacy piece, even though Connie and Charlene were talking about when it comes to health care, self-advocacy is universal. So when you have um, stresses when it comes to time management, being able to discuss that, one of the key things that we practiced yesterday, that saying no for your own benefit. So you're not overloading yourself. And even today, when it comes to budgeting, you have to speak up and say when you when you have something, when you don't have something. You have to be open and honest with yourself and advocate for what you need, whether there's resources that you are in need of, assistance that you may be in need of. That's why we brought in a professional to talk to us today about it. So uh, I want to first off say thank you to Kevin Cheatman. He is the district director of Primerica Financial Solutions. And he's worked with us before with our Chop It Up sessions. He's done a phenomenal job. He's a, a wealth of knowledge, um, just ready for us. So I'm going to turn it over to him to share, to talk about whatever he may have for us this afternoon. So uh, in the chat or with the reaction button, go ahead and give us that hand clap on there as we welcome Kevin to, to the to the meeting. Are we good now? OK, now let me do one more thing so I can make sure I'm hearing you guys correctly. OK, very good. Once again, Brian, I appreciate you having me on today. Um, and, and really, I know we're talking about budgeting uh, after Christmas. I wish we were able to talk about it before Christmas <laughs> because a lot of times uh, uh, we we go overboard and it's it's almost like it's a programming uh, that we're programmed to to just go out there and do what uh, and buy and spend and and really kind of go overboard on, on Christmas time. So what I want to do today, and I'll share my screen here, is really just educating on budgeting overall because really you, you first thing you got to ask yourself is why have a budget and really the budget is is part of the strategy of, of a bigger plan uh, there's no need for a budget really if you don't have a plan to to do something big bigger uh, like saving for college like uh like putting money away for a rainy day oh you got to have a bigger plan to start with so um Go ahead and we'll start this off here. And first of all, just talking about budgeting, but budgeting is not a dirty word. It's, it's not something bad. And what I'm going to do today is give you some steps that that can help create a budget. Uh, I think we all need to, to have a budget, but at the end of the day, 
Um, what I do want to offer at the end is is really to have a plan. Um, and and some of the, some holy books, some scriptures, uh, a lot of ancient writings talk about really without having a vision, without having a, a plan, um, all your goals will will fold. So in order to have a goal, you want to put a plan together for that goal. And that's what a, a budget is a part of that. And this is just some some uh, statistics and some facts that are going on. Uh, did you know American save, savings rate hit uh, Great Recession era lows? So back in 2022, uh, people were saving less than 1% of, of their, their income. 75% uh, of Americans don't think they can save enough to retire. Um, we work with a lot of business owners, a lot of families, and, and particularly business owners within our community. And what I'm finding is no one has a game plan and no one's saving for something like retirement. So we, we want to be able to educate and help people with that. Nearly half of Americans expect to retire in debt. Uh, there, we're, we're we're buying things. We're buying homes. We're buying cars. And we're doing all these things to to kind of look good, not just for ourselves. <laughs> it's not always for ourselves. Are, are we buying these things for ourselves or to look good for someone else? So we 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 want to make sure that that we're not just having all this unnecessary debt. There is such a thing as good debt. Uh, Americans. Uh, pandemic savings are evaporating as inflation soars. Uh, remember uh, everybody getting those stimulus checks and everything else. I mean, uh, we should have been stacking them up and saving them for a rainy day, but a lot of my, that money was spent on things that were more excessive. Um, like I said, we, we do need to be saving money and really getting a good rate of return on the money that we save. Uh, U.S. household debt tops $16 trillion in mid-rising inflation. And actually, uh, the credit card debt just recently went over $1 trillion. This is the first time it's ever did that. And, and what's happening right now is, is people are living living on their credit cards and using their credit cards to, to pay things that, uh, that normally we should have been paying just with our normal income. So we want to put some strategies together to break free, free of that. Now, why create a budget? And and you want to get a grip on your spending, uh, and a budget is going to help you do that. It's going to let let you know, okay, where my where's my money going? And I, I'm only going to designate this amount to to this activity, uh, whether it's dinner, whether it's uh, time with uh, special occasions with with family and, and kids. Uh, another thing you want you want to designate money to save for retirement. Or, or a special purpose, uh, I, I want to put a down payment on a house. Well, it's always best to save for that and just not try to try to put a whole check on that or, or save several checks because you're, you're, you're down to the wire. But if you start a savings plan and you know you want to buy a house uh, two, three years from now, that's something that you want to do in the future. Well, you want to put a savings plan together for that. Uh, to know exactly where your money's going. And that that's that's major. Sometimes when you have a, a budget, you put it down on paper, it, it changes behaviors. So you want to know exactly where your money's going. Sometimes you're like, dang, I ate out that much. Okay, let me let me cut back on that. So once once it's on paper, that roadmap gives you a better direction. And to avoid the debt trap. Uh, we feel debt is a form of bondage. And if you got so much debt, it's hard to be able to save for those things like retirement, for the kids' college education, for that trip that you want to take to, to whether it's Hawaii or the Bora Bora or something like that. You want to be able to save for that and not put it on credit. So that's what we're going to educate on. Uh, step one, you need to find out where, you, where your money should go. And this is just a... Uh, a little uh, diagram of where we feel your money should go. You should uh, have your majority of your money going towards your housing and knocking out debt. Once again, if we feel debt's a form of bondage, the quicker we knock out debt, 
the quicker we can put it into some other things like uh, like your savings and investment accounts. Uh, you, your next step is your your living expenses. You need to know how where where that money is going. That's why you want to put your budget on paper. But 26% of your living expenses, uh, that that's a good figure for for that savings. 15%. Now, how many people are are even close to to 15? How many people are saving more than 5%? You can put that in the chat. Uh, but really, what you want to do. And this is just a tip for everybody. If if you have a 457, 403, 401k on your job, you should be saving whatever your employer would match. So if you would save whatever your employer would match, that's an automatic double up. So we we always suggest that people do that. And then you want to be saving to some other things, Roth IRA, uh, different investment vehicles, a 529 uh, or an UGMA account if you want to save, but save for your kids' college. Well, what you want to do, the taxes on the average about 25%, but you want to find out some strategies to even help you reduce on that. And insurance, um, you want to, about 4% of your income should be going towards insurance. In an ideal budget, your monthly income should be, be divided up against these five main categories right here. Now, this is something even as you're getting your budget together, you want to know how much money is coming in and how much money is going out. So get your paycheck stubs together. And I mean, some, like I said, at the end of the day, it can be an eye, uh, an eye opener for a lot of people. And in that, like I said, gather all your financial statements, your 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 bank statements. Your if you have investment accounts, you want to get those together. Utility bills, all your 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 sources of income, whether it's your pay stubs, uh, child support, alimony, pension, social security, uh, rental income, dividends. Get all that stuff together for your budget. Okay. Yes. Hello. Yep, sorry to interrupt. Uh, looks like we have a question in uh, Connie. Okay, let me let me drop this down here. I didn't see that come up. No, you're okay. I'll watch the chat for you. <laughs> Hi, <clears throat> sorry to interrupt, but I had a quick question. Would yes, you mind going back to the to the um, graph of the that you had everything broken down in? I was trying yes. I was trying to write that down and I didn't quite get it all. Thank you. Oh, yeah, no problem. Let's go ahead and get that back up here. Let's see here. Or if it's OK, um, maybe we could get a copy of the presentation later. Yeah, either way. Is this the one you want to hear? Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, once again, it's just paramount to know where your money's going. Thank you very much. I'm done. No problem. Let's go here. Once again, we talked about knowing where all your money's coming in and going out. Then you create a, a list of all your monthly expenses. Uh, you're looking at your, your, your mortgage, your rent, your car, auto, health, everything that's coming out. College, uh, uh, they're making us, making, making you guys uh, that still have those, they're, they're making you pay those back now. And, uh, we pray that the government's going to work something out with that, but as of now, they're re requiring that people pay that back. So get get all that together. And once you get it all together, and th I'm going to leave my my information for you guys to contact me. And uh, when you do, I'll send you a budget worksheet as well. And and really, what you want to do is you want, like I said, put your budget on paper. This this is. 
part of your strategy. This is part of your roadmap. So in, in, in putting your together your roadmap to whatever your goal is or whatever your your vision for your financial house is, you want to have your your budget together so you can see on paper that okay, well, all these things are fixed. My my mortgage, my rent is fixed, uh, my the the car payments fixed, all, all these things are fixed. But uh this thing on food bill. Well, am I am I spending too much on things that I that I, I really love that just taste good or uh, crab legs or or lobsters or 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 am I eating out way more than I need to eat out? And could I could I save money by by cooking maybe four times a week instead of eating out four times a week? So you want to put all everything on paper. Once again, once you have it on paper, it changes behavior. You can see. It's, it's not my budget, it's your budget. So you see exactly what's going on with your money and where your money's going to. And now that you create the list, uh, you want to separate them into, you got your fixed expenses, like your mortgage, your car, your internet, all these things are the same every month. And then you got your, your variable, your, your grocery, gas, entertainment, dining out, all these things you can actually control and you can say, okay, well, let, let me see if, if I can maybe go to all these instead of going to a, to wallet chopper, I mean price chopper, <laughs> and, and see if I can save some money if I, go, I shop at different places. Uh, I, I know once again in some of the holy books it talks about uh, a, a woman, a, 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 a woman in the Bible that she goes out and she goes and finds where she can get the best possible deals at. Now, what you want to do on the step four is you want to total up all your monthly income. Total up all your monthly expenses. Once again, yeah, if your expenses are exceeding the income, you're just like, okay, let, let, what, can, what can I do? And, and once again, one, let's talk so we can get a plan to how to knock all that out quick, fast, in a hurry. We do want to, especially things like credit cards and that type of debt, we want to knock those out quick, fast, in a hurry, because that, especially the, the revolving accounts, those are what we consider bad debt. And that bad debt is really not designed for us to, to pay it off quickly. It's designed for the, the companies, the credit card companies, uh, to make the most amount of money off of you. So we want to put a system together to knock those out quick, fast, in a hurry. Now, if the expenses are greater than your income, it, you need to make some changes for sure. Now, if your expenses exceed your income, you'll need to make some adjustments. Like I said, uh, we can educate you on how to do that. But if if it's the other way around and your income is more than your, your expenses, well, you can use that extra income to knock out some of your debt quicker. And that way you can, the whole goal is to be able to save more. It should be able to, you should want to save more. You, you should have an emergency fund. And actually when we look at even putting plans together for families and business owners, we look at it like building a house. And you want to have a, you start with a solid foundation and that, that solid foundation would be protecting your income. But after that, you want to debt, you want to attack your debt. And the quicker you knock out debt, the quicker you can put that extra money into your other goals and dreams. So, and now that you created a budget, when you get all this together, make sure you want to review your budget every month. You want to make sure, and, and, and really the budget is, it, it's like a habit. And coming next month, and I don't know why people wait, and they know they want to start working out and getting their health together. Uh, they they wait till January first, <laughs> but but really putting the budget together is is it's kind of like that. You want to make it a habit of doing it like on a on a regular basis, and when it becomes a habit, and you start implementing the strategies to to help you do better, well. After a while, it's on autopilot, and you're good to go. It's, it's kind of like going to the gym. And once 
after you, you go for the first month, it's that second month that it seems like your, your autopilot just clicks in and it's become a habit and you don't have to think about or force your body to go to the gym because now you develop those those, those muscles and that that mental muscle that to say, okay, I'm going to take care of this on a monthly basis. I'm going to take care of my working out. I'm going to take care of my budget regularly. So once again, I'm a, I'll get you guys a, a budget worksheet. And uh, this is actually what what I'll do for everybody as well. And and this is the, the really the key. Most families, as far as wealthy families, they have a, a financial advisor or a plan. Uh, most middle income families have neither because of cost. And what I've done will do for Brian and KC Health. And, and this is what I do for business owners. I give them a, a financial plan at no cost. And if you contact me today, you get the, the How Money Works workbook. And that workbook will just kind of level you up on financial education. Once again, that's that's paramount for us to, to gain the, as much education about our finances so we can be able to maximize and get the most out of our incomes and uh, on, uh, out of our goals and dreams. And uh, it takes about 30 minutes to put the plan together. Um, but... But yeah, let's sit down and talk about that. Um, this is my information if you guys want to write that down. And uh, I'm open to ask answer any questions for anyone. Thank you, Kev. We also put the his email in the chat for you so that you have it. Um, but yes, we are open into questions. You need to put it in the chat or unmute yourself. Um, since I'm already unmuted, I'm going to jump in line first. Sorry, everyone. Uh, so Kevin, I heard you talk about um, a few slides ago. You were talking about the. Uh, oh, I forgot what it was. Can you go back? Maybe I think it was slide 10 or 11. It was one of those two. Let's see here. I'm trying to remember which one it was. Uh, making adjustments. Oh, yeah, there we go. So, um, actually, no, I think it was 11. Sorry. Okay. We got you. We got you. Okay, there we go. So, when viewing our, our monthly budget, and I heard you talk about comparing your actual monthly expenses. So, just asking it for someone that may be thinking it. Is it okay to have a second set of eyes that you trust do it? So thinking, okay, well, I don't have enough money to consult a financial advisor. Is it okay to trust my brother or my sister to help me with my budget? Well, I would say it's okay if your brother or sister are where you want to be or in the direction where you want to go. So yeah, I, I, I wouldn't have, I mean, I, I would suggest that'd be a good idea, but um, at the end of the day, it's always good to talk with a professional. Um, what I've found and, and just it, it, even in my growth in the financial service industry, I know I'm able to help people get better returns uh, whether it's on investments and they can do on their own. So once again, having a set of eyes that, that especially if it doesn't cost you anything, it, it's always good. So like I said, I'm for the group here, I, I'd be willing to do that at no cost. But yeah, everybody should have a plan. Everybody should have a road map, map to where they want to go. And uh, what I found also is on your jobs, your HR, they, they they're busy so they don't always have time to to educate you on exactly how to maximize your retirement planning um they don't really even talk to you about budgeting and things like that so uh like i said having someone you can go to and get that information from is is paramount to succeeding perfect and then my second and last question um is so for a lot of people they don't understand how investments work. Like we hear the word, but we don't really truly understand the the idea behind it. It's more of a, OK, so I'm going to put my money into something that I can't necessarily see or there's an immediate tangible uh, result from it. And so could you break that part down just a little bit? Well, for for a lot of us, 
I think the the whole financial education is has been almost kept from us. And uh, I'm of the opinion that once you know better, you should do better. Investing, I mean, this this here is my Apple phone. People either have an Apple. Everybody on here has a phone. <laughs> and but but a lot of us don't have any ownership in that company or that phone that we have. We 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 drink Coca Cola, we drink Pepsi, we 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 wear Nikes, and we do all these different things. But we have no ownership in those companies that that we use every day. So what investing is is you're putting your money into these companies that we use every day, and and these companies will give you a return, uh, whether it's whether it's capital gains. Uh, as far as the investment, uh, if you sell it, you're selling it for more uh, than than you bought it for, for. You got appreciation. You got dividend income. Some of these companies will pay you dividends uh, for just having their stock. So there's all different types of ways. And really, th th people always talk about like having multiple streams of income, but one of the best ways to have multiple streams of income is through investments because you can have different ways to, to grow your money to, through capital gains, through capital appreciation, through dividends. Um, so through in, um, the increase in, in the, the interest and in, in, in everything else. So yeah, you, you want to, you have to be an investor. If you're not an investor, um, real talk, you, you're probably going to be working the rest of your life. So you need to be investing in something. Your your 401k is important. Your your company's retirement plan, but you do need to maximize that. Uh, a lot of times, people don't totally understand how that works. You already are an investor if you're using that, but you need to know exactly how it works. Like I said, HR a lot of times they don't have time to go through all that with people. So you need to work with somebody who can help you understand that and help you maximize that, not just for yourself, but uh, for, for the next generation as you pass that money on. Perfect. We have a question in the comments. Uh, Connie, I would really like to get to invest in something. I tried some time ago, but was insecure about it. OK, I see you there. And really, it's all about knowledge, Ms. Connie. It's, it's all about knowledge and, and and really someone actually sitting down uh, and showing you what it looks like for you and not just not a cookie cutter program, but what it, it looks like for you to be an investor and um, and really even show you the <clears throat> the future, the future outlook of you being an investor. Well, if I do this, and and I'm not sure uh, your age, Connie, but let's say uh, you were uh, 30 years old. Well, if you're not gonna retire for 30 years, I mean, in that amount of time, the cost of living is gonna increase maybe two and a half times over the next 30 years. So you wanna be an investor so you can be prepared for that cost of living. Because at some point, we're not going to be able to work any longer. And, and when that happens, we need to have enough income accumulated to where we can live off the interest of that income. It's what we call your FIN number or your financial independence number. Everybody on here, you need to know what that number is for you. And that's the amount of money that you need to accumulate during your working years. So one day when you retire, you can live off the interest of that money. You need to know what your FIN number is. Um, if I could say something, um, thank you so much for that answer. Oh, wait a minute, I'm not showing my picture. But anyway, um, I am going to be retiring within a year, I hope. And um, this is one of the questions and the things that I'm trying to do is have uh, some other type of income uh, to build onto my retirement and whatever yes. else I have coming in. And so um, I tried to do some investing. I even joined some kind of group, but they were everything they were saying and doing was way over my head. 
<laughs> and so, and then I was afraid because, you know, when you don't have but so much money, you're kind of afraid to do much of anything with your, the money that you have. So um, perhaps I would like to talk to you sometime in the near future about maybe taking some steps. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. And we, we can definitely do that. I, I hope you did take my information down. Um, but I, I'm going to keep it real, Miss Connie. At, there's different stages where, like, if you're Brian's age and Brian's in his, young, his, his early 30s, well, Brian can, Brian can take more risk. And and he he's seeking growth right now. He, he wants his accounts to grow, grow, grow. But le- there, there's going to come a stage where he's going to want to pull back on that that type of growth and go into more conservative, more protection stage. When I, I, myself, I'm 57 years old, so I'm more into. I still want my money to grow, but I'm more conservative at this point. When I hit 60, I'm going in protection mode, and I want to protect what I accumulated. But at the same time, I'm still going to be an investor. I still want growth. So there's different strategies for all that. And uh, once again, when when we get together, I mean, we could show you what all that looks like, whether you're whether you're just getting started at 20 years old or whether you're you're done and you want to make sure that your assets last you because because real talk. And this is for everybody as well. With the health care and everything else getting better. People are going to be retired for 30 plus years. Lord willing, if the Lord keeps you here, I mean, you can look at a 30 plus year retirement. And that's a, uh, I mean, a retirement period where no extra ink, no income coming in. So the amount I accumulated, I can live off of that. Or do I need to get a retirement job? Do I need to get an encore job? So, yeah, we, we can talk about all those things. Yes, thank you. Yes, ma'am. So we're still open to questions. Again, you can unmute yourself or put them in the chat. Um, I did have another one that came across, not via the chat, but via my own head cap. Um, so we know that we're coming into the time of the year where, like you said, we tend to overdo it for Christmas, and now we're getting into the new year and the new me, and so I'm going to start doing this, this, that, and the other. And we start to look at, well, we have income tax time. And so uh, from your professional opinion, um, how should we view things like that? We know that for some, they get large sums of money back, and that's when you see all the great, air quote, great deals at the stores and the car lots and things like that. Um, But how, from your professional opinion, how should people view and handle that time of year? Well, once again, that time of year, it's... uh it's it's part of the programming as well and people are are programmed to to take that lump sum of money and i mean i i i have a uh and actually i i see a a friend of mine on here miss amnesia uh but uh julian uh calentar he uh, has a, a a car lot, and he was telling me about how people buy new cars, and and two months later, they can't afford them anymore. And they put a big down payment on it, and they put these thousand dollar wheels on it, and people just they just go crazy with the money. My my thought process and what we train people to do is to use that money to to buy down debt or to put that money away you need an emergency fund we we talk about you're either in a storm you just got out of one or one's coming at you life life is gonna life (laughs) life is gonna keep on life so you you better be prepared for when it comes and rather than putting when life comes your way on a credit card If you had this emergency fund that was getting a good return on the money, not just burying it in a bank and getting a less than 1% return, but somewhere where at least you're getting a 4% return and the money is doing better than inflation. And when the emergency comes, you can pull that money out of that emergency fund that you knew 
that I put together for this transmission to go out or for the AC to go out on my house. I put it together for this purpose and I don't have to pay interest on top of it. I'm 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 getting interest for my money. So and that's that's another thing. We we're either gonna pay interest or we're gonna make interest. So you got to decide at some point which side of that fence you're going to be on. Um, you're paying interest on your credit cards to the banks and to everybody else, or you can make interest uh, on like a money market account that's doing four plus percent different investments. So everybody should want to be on the side of where they're making interest because that's where the wealth is going to be built on from that, that side of the fence. But really when it comes to the tax returns, uh, another thing that we coach and educate people to do is to lower your your dependence on <laughs> on your, your your W-2. Lower your dependence. So all you're doing with your tax return is you're giving the government a loan. And they're giving you the money back interest-free. The government's using your money throughout the year, and then they'll give it back to you interest-free. We educate people to take that money and lower your dependents, get your money in your check, and use that money to accumulate wealth. Use that money uh, either to buy down your debt and to knock that out, or to, to become an investor and put that money away. Thank you. I think that was super helpful. And again, um, some of these are not coming across on chat. Some of these are also uh, conversations pieces. Like we mentioned before, uh, we've had Kevin come to our barbershop conversations, chop it up. And so we've had these discussions before. So uh, I'm just thinking of things that I know have come up during those conversations that, like I said, we might not think about at the moment, or maybe we're just not comfortable asking. But um, I'm going to give a few more minutes just for any other questions that may come across. Again, I did put Kevin's information in the chat, his office number, as well as his email, so you can feel free to contact him. Um, and again, you can drop your questions, comments, or you can unmute yourself and ask whatever it is you may be interested in. Um, so I have one more question for you. So looking at, OK, so I get my budget together and I'm at a deficit. I got way more going out than what I have coming in. Is it safe to just automatically jump into the realm of, OK, well, I'm going to go get a second and a third job, or are there other steps that you might suggest that could help? Well, I I, I would say having a, a second source of income would definitely help expedite knocking that out. So that that would mean it. And, and, and really, I mean, there's there's so many things you can do, but but also you want to devise a strategy to knock that debt out quick, fast, in a hurry. So there's different strategies that we use, whether it's debt snowballing and 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 whether you're paying a minimum, but but paying a card off, and or whatever the debt is, and and, and rolling that money over into the next debt. And, and and what happens is, especially when it comes to debt. Sometimes we 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 pay off a card and and we get excited about oh that money's free now. <laughs> so what can I do with it? Well, it's like what can I buy with it? Not what can I? How can I use this to my advantage to to put me in a better place? So we we educate people to 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 knock out one debt at a time, keep rolling it down, and we we've shown people how to pay off their houses and everything, uh, saving ten years off their mortgage. So. It's all about having a strategy. So that that's something. I mean, if if anybody wants to know about more about that, we can show them how to do that as well. Perfect. I did see Connie raised her hand. You had another question, Connie? Um, no, I didn't have another question. I was just trying to put my hand down, but oh. I really <laughs> do appreciate all all of this information. I wish. May, um. Well, Brian, you're recording this, right? I I'm, yes. I might try to share this with my sons because I've been telling them for years kind of the same thing. You need to save and do different things with your money besides spend all you can on everything you can. <laughs> so thank you so much, sir, for um, 
being here. I really appreciate it, and I'll be reaching out. Thank yes, Miss Dottie. And, and the earlier we get started, the better. The earlier we get started, especially with a, a investment or a retirement type of plan, the less that we have to throw to, to, to throw money at the plan. If, if you get to up to where you're in the 50 years old and 50 plus, and you haven't saved for retirement, I mean, you gotta you gotta throw a lot of money at it, or you just gotta have a plan to, that I'm just gonna keep working. Whether even if it's a part time job, I gotta keep something. But the uh, earlier you can get started, and and really somebody like your age, and, and if you're in your 30s and 20s, you, you're gonna. I mean, real talk, you're gonna need a couple million dollars by the time you you're ready to sit down. So you have. I mean, you you have to have a plan to get that though. It's it's just not gonna happen on its own. Um, like I said, uh, if you don't have a budget, the money's just gonna, the money has, has a way of just doing what it wants to do when you don't have a budget. So it, 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 it'll, you'll find something to spend it on without a budget. But it, if you are instructing your money on where to go, then you, you're already ahead of the game. And that's all a budget is, is you telling your money what to do and not, the, the TV or the, the commercials or anything else telling you where to spend your money at. Absolutely. So we definitely appreciate you, Kevin, for taking your time out to talk to us about finances again. If you got questions, comments, concerns, you put it in the chat. Um, I do want to share my screen real quick. Um, as this does conclude our, oops, I think I'm on the wrong. Oh, no, I have the right one. Um, our last day of our four days of healthness. I want to thank you all for joining us. Um, I do want you to take a second and scan that QR code. Um, this is the post survey for today's session. Your input is very, very important and valuable to what it is that we do. Um, if you can't scan that code, don't worry. I'm going to go ahead and put in the chat the link to that same survey so that you'll have it. Mr. Uh, Davenport, I yes, have sir. one question. Absolutely. So, Mr. Kevin, I it is kind of like a question, but at the same time, I would like to share the thing that I'm doing. Um, after my divorce, I have a huge debt. You don't even want to imagine how big it was my debt. Uh, and after that, well, my budget it's always to pay a certain amount of money to that. And I would love to know about the revolving accounts. And the one thing that I'm doing, I would love to know if this is helping me or hurting me. I keep always four credit cards. I borrow money from one to pay the others, like a balance transfers when they offer no interest on that balance, balance transfers for a year. And I start paying that one first and help me to reduce the big amount. One of the other things that I do as soon as I have one in credit card in zero, I apply for another card because they rain a lot of offers to me that uh, get this card, spend $1,000 and you are going to get $200 uh, cash back for free. I love to do that kind of things as soon as I close one card. I request an additional one or for any other bank. They give me the a car. I spend the $1,000 on a stuff that I need because it's very easy to spend $1,000 on your regular uh, needs. And then I got the money, the $200 that they gave me, and I use it on my, on, on whatever I want. I use one, according to my understanding, I'm beating the system, but I may be. Uh, I may be wrong, so I would like to know what you think about that. Well, I can tell you this. The people that I've known that have done it, and, and there's some people that do it, but it, it can it can get to be like a job. Tracking and, and keeping track and staying up on top of that because, and, and the thing is, that if if you fall short or if you you're paying a little bit less on it, then they hit you with the full weight. They, they want you to mess up on it. They want you to maybe uh, be late on a payment or something like that. So 
I would just suggest that you be careful, be, be very careful with it. It is a, a strategy, but it's, it's a, you got to make sure that your long-term goal, that that's not a part of your long-term goal. And I, I think at the end of the day, you'd still, you want to have credit cards, but you want to be careful on, on how you use those and really, as long as you're paying them down and, and getting them to the point where you really don't have that debt, you want to be able to put more towards liquid money. And investments are liquid to where. Yeah. <laughs> so, the, but so that's to what make you, investments, you need money. And that is the thing that I don't have. <laughs> yeah. And, and it, it's all a process. It's all a process. And like I said, I'd love to get together with you and, and show you how, how that works out as well and how you can get at least started on that. But um, yeah, I, I would just say be careful with with, uh, with that system. Um, like I said, I do know some people that do it, but it, it, it could be like a job. But that is not going to hurt me in any way, right? No, no. As long as you stay in, in front of it. If you get behind okay. it, then it's a bad thing. Thank you. And I will be in touch with you. Thank yes. you again. Uh, Ms. Flowers wants to know, Kevin, are you from Leavenworth, Kansas? Yes, that's, that is my hometown. <laughs> I'm down <laughs> here. Hello, my name is Andrea Flowers. I'm from Leavenworth also. We know some of the same people. <laughs> okay, okay. I just recognized the name. I said, oh, I think I know him. Well, he's, yes. yeah, yes. so anyway. I'm down here in Grandview, Missouri now. I've been here for it's going on almost 30 years now. Okay. <laughs> Good to see all you. Right. All right, Ms. Flowers. Bye-bye. So again, we thank you all for jumping on and making this week of events, uh, sessions, lessons, so much fun. I appreciate all the great insight questions from all of all of our viewers, uh, for all of our presenters. You all have done an amazing job. Um, again, I did do ask that you please take that survey for us. It is not long at all. Um, and then if you're interested in going back and watching the other videos, I did post that in there too. There's the link to the YouTube page that will have the other three videos. Today's will be added to it once it's done being recorded. Um, um, if you need Kevin's information, that is in the chat. You have his email and his office number. Uh, Brother Kev, we appreciate you for sure for, uh, again, the wealth of knowledge that you are and your willingness to want to educate our community. It, it is invaluable and definitely is not overlooked at all. Um, if you all would, please let our speaker know how he's done by either giving him the hand clap emoji or you can just put a simple thank you in the chat. Thank you all. Thank you, Dennis. See, that's what I'm talking about. Participation <laughs> at its best. We like people above people. and beyond. <laughs> right. <laughs> Greatly appreciate it. Uh, so we're going to give you all some time back on your days. We hope that you all stay safe during this holiday season, uh, throughout the upcoming weeks. And remember to use these tips and things that you've learned this week. Go back and share a video with a family member, a friend, a coworker, a boss, your cat, your dog, whoever. Um, just to pass on some more knowledge. The more we know, the better we should and will be able to do. So uh, we're going to stay on just for a few more minutes. If you have any additional questions for Kevin or for myself, we'll hang out for about another two minutes on here. Otherwise, thank you all so much and we appreciate you. Thank you, everybody. All right, Brian. I appreciate it, sir. That was awesome. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, bro. Thank you for the platform and give me the opportunity. Oh, absolutely. Um, well, I'll definitely get with you probably right after the new year um, so I can start planning out some of our conversations and things like that for next year. Okay. I really want to do like a, uh, like how uh, Willie and them had set up to do like just a workshop yeah on financial type stuff but i'll get with you like i said after the new year we can sit down and figure out what that may look like okay I tell you what i mean a lot of people are 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 getting focused on on that so 
Yeah, let me know because it's it's getting busy. It's getting booked up. Oh yeah, I so got I'll it. let you know sooner than later. Yeah, that'd be good, brother. Cool. Well, I appreciate you, sir. Okay, Brian. Merry All right. Christmas, brother. Same to you. Have a good one. Oh, you, Brian. Dennis, you got a question? Yeah. Um, when I click on the survey, it takes me to my private email. Doesn't make take me to my work email. So when I try to switch it, it doesn't. It doesn't uh, work. Also. So. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, let me know if it doesn't, and I can email you the yeah, link e again. Yeah, yeah, I think email me the link. That would be great. Okay, not a problem. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. All right. Bye.